Today we are going to talk about why the crypto market is falling. Most of you have read into the new US proposed regulations and Evergrande debacle that has been playing out this week. However, 46 days ago, I made a video on why I believe we are entering bear market phase over the coming months. And if you watch that video, you know that I liquidated all my cryptocurrency assets when the Chinese news was announced, not as an exit out of the cryptocurrency market permanently, but to actually reallocate my assets and to think about reinvesting back to the cryptocurrency market. Now, this was all based on the reports and on-chain analysis at the time. Things weren't as bright as people wanted you to believe, even before the new US regulations that were incoming. So what concerns me about this new draft of regulation? Many things. Banning the use of unauthorized stablecoins. Now, what constitutes an unauthorized stablecoin? Is it like Tether, which is uh, situated in Hong Kong? Penalties on privacy coins, so like Monero and Dash. Rebranding smart contracts that take any longer than 24 hours to deliver as futures contracts and regulate them accordingly. Also, redefining the legal tender, and they want to actually introduce the digital USD by the Federal Reserve. So by banning most stablecoins that are centralized, the market will go through a liquidity crisis. The penalties on privacy coins is a vague law, which I believe it's a ban for the most part. Because if it's going to create a penalty where every time you invest and go out of Monero and Dash, you have to pay a fee, and a big one, by the way, people will be less incentivized to invest in. So essentially, it's going to get banned. Now, the biggest concern, even bigger than the idea of people using privacy coins for their own anonymity and seeking their own right, the biggest concern is smart contracts becoming future contracts. So most ERC-20 tokens, above all DeFi, which has been hailed as this big revolutionary financial product, which I believe otherwise, will be at jeopardy and become harder to invest in as the cryptocurrency derivatives market anyways, you cannot enter, it's heavily regulated in the US. And US investors can't enter it anyway, so if you try to use Kraken or FTX or any cryptocurrency exchange that is situated in the US, you cannot enter the cryptocurrency derivatives market. So by putting derivatives into DeFi, you're banning DeFi, but how can you ban something that is decentralized? It's very questionable how all this will work out. Now, whoever created this legislation, has a great deal of knowledge about the crypto market and they are seeking to limit bitcoin and to becoming the legal tender and widely accepted currency digital usd is going to further centralize the crypto market now it is going to be hard for people to actually accept it at least for me i won't buy into that it takes one level using stable coins but it takes another level to use something that is issued by the federal reserve because the thing is when you use the Federal Reserve currency, you're going to be questioned about every transaction. If you're going to be questioned about every transaction, then you'll have to keep submitting report after report for every time you send and receive currency, whether it's digital USD or Bitcoin or any other form of cryptocurrency. Now, this will make it hard for US investors to seek anonymity and ease of liquidity, and you're going to it's going to become essentially harder for the institutional investor to invest in the cryptocurrency market because it is heavily regulated it, you cannot really move this stuff anymore. That's my concern about this legislation for the digital USD. So this ban that we're going to see in the US, you're going to see most cryptocurrency exchanges like Kraken, Coinbase, creating US subsidiaries like Kraken.us, Coinbase.us. Also, I began noticing that there are grayscale outflows of a consistent 200 Bitcoins daily for seven months now, and no one is talking about it. You're talking about $8 million worth of Bitcoin daily leaving the fund, which signals investors feel even before the Chinese ban and during the cream of the cryptocurrency market gains. So this really concerns me, to be honest. And I read this article on Medium about is Evergrande going to kill Bitcoin? Of course not. But the idea here, it talks about Evergrande and the perfect storm. It essentially comes down to how Evergrande is going to deal with its crypto holdings, which if you didn't know, they have holdings in cryptocurrency, not only real estate. So here are two outcomes, and I'll have this linked in the description because it is a good read, by the way. So the China doesn't bail out Evergrande, so Evergrande has to liquidate fast and dumps its cryptocurrency holdings across the market to account for bond leverage. And this creates low market liquidity, leading to multiple crashes in the prices of Ford, Tether, and Bitcoin. Now, 
At first, people thought that, Tether, that there were bonds between Evergrande and Tether. If Evergrande crashes, that means Tether crashes. However, there were no bonds, so I think that eased most of the investor confidence. But however, what it talks about here, Chinese bails out Evergrande. They can use crypto and bonds to spike the price of Bitcoin and USD. Now, I don't believe that is the case. If China bails out Evergrande, they're going to liquidate most of those assets. Not most, but at least the cryptocurrency assets because it is banned. If it is banned, they can't keep holding it for longer. So you're going to have a lot of liquidations. So spiking the price of Bitcoin and USD, I don't think that is possible. More of the proponent of the idea that it doesn't bail out Evergrande because if let's say China bails out Evergrande you're going to have more and more institutions further down the line 5, 10, 15 years down the line doing the same risky stuff that Evergrande put themselves in and this stuff is not new by the way back in 2016 and I'll watch this video by the way inside the Chinese housing bubble there are many towns in China that have these big town that have these big high rise buildings and no one is living in them so this bubble has been forming over many years and now it just popped and you're going to see this whole company fail due to its sheer amount of debt of 300 billion so in the end I know this is a shorter video than usual but in the end are we entering a cryptocurrency market bear market um, I believe at this point based on the information based on on-chain analysis based on how grayscale has been liquidating 200 bitcoins daily for the last seven months and the idea is there is no reason why they have been liquidating it this way like are they paying management fees like why are you liquidating eight million dollars daily anyways i believe we are entering a bear market now this bear market you're go it's going to be much harder than any other bear market because firstly we have institutional investors big stakes in bitcoin huge sell-offs the second thing is the price falls that we have seen so the price of bitcoin has fallen by nearly 15 percent in the span of this month so we are essentially entering a bear market things have been running off steam for a very long time if you ask me this is my investor confidence like i have been doing a lot of research over the last few months I have not found a reason why I should be holding cryptocurrency longer. When the Chinese ban came, I believe that was the final straw. I believe that there is no recovery from that point. And things have seemed that way ever since. Now, does that mean that I'm bearish on cryptocurrency, that Bitcoin is going to zero? Of course not. I don't believe cryptocurrency is going to zero. But I believe we are still early, which is a big advantage, by the way. You should be happy that we are early. The idea that we are still not prepared for accepting Bitcoin as a legal tender gives people more time to invest in Bitcoin, more time to know about Bitcoin and understand it. So to me, the idea is we have to wait. Did I begin dollar cost averaging back into the market? Not yet. I still believe prices are too high. I will start dollar cost averaging when the price of Bitcoin falls below $30,000. Now, most people are saying that there will be a recovery in the price of Bitcoin. Well, show us your evidence, show us your reports, show us your on-chain analysis. People were talking about some Bitcoin supply shock and yes, there was a huge accumulation by long-term holders as shown by Glassnode reports. However, there have been heavy accumulation during bear markets. So how do you know when the heavy accumulation comes that there will be a bull market or that there will be price action then like the idea is when long-term holders have increased their stake in bitcoin does not mean that the price has to go up and it's not a guaranteed way of making the cryptocurrency market rise it's just plain and simple so stay safe stay smart invest in crypto buy bitcoin time is money thank you for watching see you guys on the next video